G'day, I'm Gary, and today I'll be looking at the new Blackmagic Speed Editor in conjunction with DaVinci Resolve Studio. Now, if you like what I do, please subscribe, hit the like button, that'll be really great. Now, some background about me and, and why I've chosen to, to get the Speed Editor is I'm a Premiere Pro user, have been for over a decade now. Um, but the subscription each year for the Adobe Suite costs a substantial amount of money. So I thought I'd look at Resolve. In doing so, I started using the free version of Resolve and then the Speed Editor came out and I thought this is a good opportunity to jump in, get the full version of Resolve Studio and get the Speed Editor. So you can see that as the speed it is for free or the full version of DaVinci is for free. Either way, it's not a bad proposition and I don't have to pay an annual subscription. So that was one of my reasons for, for doing it. The second reason is that I often edit on a laptop or, or do a cut edit, just a rough edit while I'm out in the field. I'm using a, a MacBook Pro as a, an editing machine and the problem with that is I'm, I might be sitting in my car or I'm um, sitting in a chair but certainly not at a desk in an office and it can be difficult to use a mouse, in fact impossible to use a mouse and the trackpad is fairly awkward. So having an actual dedicated panel that I can then use to do a, a speed edit, a cut, a first cut, um, would be great. That way I can see how all the shots are going together and whether I've missed anything or, or pick up pick up errors in the field. So enough of me talking about why it's good for me. I'm using the ATEM Mini to switch. So I'll switch over and um, get into um, a Resolve project and show you the actual speed editor while I'm using that. So on the main screen now we've got a DaVinci Resolve project that I'm currently working on. I'll do a split screen and you're able to see the actual speed editor on the left hand side. I'll only use one hand so I don't cover the, the keys so you can see what's going on. So what we'll start up in, uh, we're in the, the cut page and on the top are the source clips. You can see here and what I'm doing is using the, the scroll about just there is probably where I want to put an in point. So I click in, and but I want to refine that. So I can press jog, and you can see that straight away has expanded that that time that uh, source line, and it's just there works for the audio. Yeah. So let's do that. We will escape back to the, the full line by hitting the scroll and we'll just need to press jog again to just get, make that finer edit and just after I finish speaking you can see there I'm speaking there and just after there and then I'll press the out go back to the source and that's the full source line up there. Now down below you can see the actual timeline and by clicking timeline here you can see that by using the the wheel that is currently scrolling along the timeline and I can then just that's in jog and then this will be in in shuttle. Okay, so well, let's go back to scroll. But at the end, we've got a number of different options we can do. Once we've um, created um, that clip, we can append it, or we can insert it, or we can place on top. First of all, I'll just put append it. And you can see that the timeline jumps to the end. And if we go back up to this, actually we'll stay in the timeline, and you can see there that that's appended that. Say I wanted to actually put that on top, let's press this button which will be the undo button if I click it twice or the escape button if I click it once. So I've un undone that. We'll go up to the source or 
Now we can see that that's the clip still that I want to put. But what I want to do is we'll go to the timeline, find a space to put that in. Let's just put it there. And we'll put it on top. So you can see there, I'm scrolling along the timeline, that it's placed it on top there. So very simple, using one hand to do that. Um, so we want to see what that looks like. We can hit the full view, uh, hit play. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. We'll hit stop, we'll, we'll, we'll take it back to the, the main page. Now, say we want to do a, put a transition just here. Let's put that there. We'll just do a dissolve. Oops, we'll just. And that's put a dissolve there for us. We could do, um, so we don't like dissolve. We can double click and it removes it. Still, all I've been doing is using one, one hand to do all this. I can go up. Find another clip watch I want to add. That's just around there. We'll just put it in there. We'll zoom in, go for jog, and then we'll just, when I start speaking, just about there, we'll refine that in point. Go to scroll, we'll just there, we'll refine that. So we'll go to jog. Okay, so let's do a smart insert with that one. So we'll go to the timeline. Fine. So by doing using the smart insert button, that was able to put that clip in between and push the timeline out. So there's a lot of options, and I'm only touching on, on what this speed editor can do. As you can see, I've jumped over to the edit page. It's not just a one trick pony it actually will work in the edit page but certainly not with the same um, degree of functionality that it does have in the cut page you can see I'm just a new user I really don't know the software or the speed editor as well as I will after a couple of weeks of practice so what I wanted to do with this video just to show you what it can do and perhaps how it can help your workflow but certainly for my workflow and out in the field, it will be invaluable. So um, I really like the cut page and I like the speed editor. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy that I've uh, jumped in and, and um, bought them both. Well, bought one and got the other one for free. Anyway, if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.